Hello everyone, so today I'm going to try out some other methods with the WAN 2.2. Previously we've checked out the WAN 2.2 the first day it was launched and supported in ComfyUI. As you can see by default in the ComfyUI template right here, you'll have the selections of the video generation template for WAN 2.2. But there is some drawback. Everyone has tried it and should know this. When we use the 14B parameter model, it generally requires quite some time to make it happen for a simple image to video or text to video generation. So, in this video, I am going to try out some methods to speed up the generation as well as using the 5B model for another interesting way to upres the video resolution. As I mentioned, 5B model have some potential. It has something really cool that you can play around with. Just think out of the box. Instead of using this for normal video generation for text or image to video, these are also able to be used for upscaling your video. I am going to try that out in this video as well. So there are two things in this tutorial we are going to do. As you can see right here, I have some demo videos that I already generated, five second videos. Although this was generated in 720p white resolution, I'm able to upscale it to something high resolution, like a 1080p res. And basically, with this resolution generated result, you can even bring it further with other upscale software such as Topaz, a very popular one that you can use to upscale your 1080p resolution video to 2K or 4K resolution with no problem at all. And it have better result in 2K or 4K upscaling if you have a video with 1080 resolution rather than a 480p res. By just only using Comfy UI to upscale to 2K or 4K, there will be some problem and limitations for the pixels to get like a real 2K or 4K video. So we are going to bring this to 720p resolution or 480p resolution to almost like 1080p using the 5B model. And right here, I have modifications of the image to video workflow from the Comfy UI template in here. Once again, you have to update your Comfy UI before seeing this new browse template. Some other people still ask in the comment sections, why can't I get this template in the Comfy UI here? And there's your answer. Anyway, moving to the workflows here, I have this set up for how that is going to be doing more settings dynamically. First of all, we have the sampling steps. I set it to 10 because right now we are using the Light X2 V. The Light X2 V can be used with the LoRa models and can be used with the WAN 2.2, which means that you are able to connect the layout like this using the WAN 2.2 high noise and low noise. Then you can connect each of these pipelines of the model data, passing it with the LoRa model loading with the Light X2 V LoRa. I usually download the LoRa models from the official repo, which is going to be this one. They published this a while ago, and you can check that out. Just be conscious that we are going to use the image to video 14B models in this scenario. So in this way, we are going to go back to here where you will see this image to video 14B like X2, V, and another option that you can use, which is going to be the Fusion X LoRa. The Fusion X LoRa, you have to obviously select the right type of LoRa model, which in this case, I am using image to video WAN 2.2. Therefore, we are going to select the Fusion X image to video 14B LoRa model. And as well, this one is also able to download in the GitHub repo. In the official Fusion X Hugging Face repo, it has the WAN 2.1 models where you have image to video, text to video, and other types such as the Phantom model as well. Then when you click into the Fusion X LoRa folder, you will see that there's a Fusion X LoRa model that you don't have to download the whole set of Diffusion models. Just use this LoRa to embed it with your pipeline. And this is going to allow us to use the LoRa models in here and embed that with the WAN 2.214B base model. So this way, it will enable the WAN 2.2 using the Fusion X or the Light X2 V Distill LoRa model like that. So let's say in this case, I am going to switch it back to the Light X2 V distilled LoRa models for both high and low noise sampling in this workflow. And right here, it is just the same connections of the template workflow. But one thing I have added is the patch for the Sage Attention nodes in here, where we are going to use it if you install the Stage Attentions, or if you don't install that, 
cannot install that on your machine. Then you can go disable with this option, the 10-step sampling. It is where I put in here for the K-Sampler Advanced. Now, in the K-Sampler Advanced, because we are using the steps of 10, therefore, we have to calculate how many percentages we are going to use for the first K-Sampler events and steps. In here, I have put another connection for this value where I am passing the calculations from here in the beginning of the workflow settings in the settings group. I am doing the high noise percentage value defined in here. So let's say I am using 60% of the sampling steps for the high noise sampling. So therefore it has calculated math in here. So 0.6, which means we got six steps to do with the total step of 10 steps here for the high noise end steps. So passing this value back to the first group here, which is the high noise sampling. This is going to be more dynamic. You can set that to 50% for the high noise percentage. For example, you can change it to 50, and this is going to be the percentage. So just keep in mind that when you do these values, this is in the percentage. So you can do it like 25% or just 20%. That is going to be a better way because the input value in here is going to be the integer passed to the k-sampler advanced. Here, it needs to be an integer in order to have the correct value passed into these numbers. So let's say if you put 25, it will be 2 point something here. It will become 3. So it's better just using like 10, 20, 30, the value setting like this, rather than just some different odd numbers in the percentage settings. That will be easier for the AI to run. So in this case, I put 20%, that means I am going to have two steps for the high noise sampling. And let's say if I am doing 50, that means it is going to have five sampling steps for the high noise sampling in this group. So we are going to run this, and then next is the low noise sampling. The same methodology here. We have the dynamic value input to the start at steps in this place, where we also put the total sampling numbers in here, pass into here dynamically, it will generate the video for you just like this example. The noise in here, it is something interesting for me to play around with. And I think just for demo purposes, I have output this as the VAE decode and show you guys how that actually looks like as a diffusion noise. It is going to be like this noisy stuff that you are not able to recognize. This actually is the video of this video output. But this is what the AI is actually looking at when it is generating the video. So going to the next steps, it is something that's really fun to play around with. I see that the 5 billion model is able to take an image and pass it into the latent image. Because this is a case sampler and this is we can use it like a very traditional way. If you play around with image to video or just in general image diffusion models where you use the VAE on code for image to image, it is the same concept here. So we bring this generated video from the first group in here as the result then we pass to this group that I call the 5B latent upscale. So using the image list from the generated video in the first group, I do upscale the image by 1.5 times, pass that to the VAE encode, allow it to have another rendering in this case sampler. This is a very simple basic one that I'm using the WAN 2.25 billion parameters model. In the text prompts, I didn't do any specific text prompt, just do a general high detail high quality, those kinds of text in this text for the instruction. And I set the denoise to 0.2. Therefore, it is able to generate the video like this, the same output of what I have in the first group. The overall resolutions will be upscaled 1.5 times. In this case, I did that with upscale two times before when I tried this with this image to video example. I have also put a normal upscale with model note in here just for comparison. So I can show you guys what is the difference in here. This one on the right side here is using the normal upscale width model. That means that I am using the real ESRGAN 4X model. This is going to upscale this video as an output. You see that the colorations of both are looking different. When you see the left side here, this is upscaled by the latent upscale using the 5 billion parameter models of the WAN 2.2. The coloration is looking more natural. And when you compare two videos side by side, the face and the hair are looking more natural using the 5B models to do the latent upscale. Whereas if you just use models for upscaling, you will see that a lot of oversharpening of the hair like this. The eyes sometimes are oversharpened and it will create some kind of pixelated black eyes within that area. 
But when you are using the 5B models, or just using the diffusion way to upscale this, by using the latent upscale, you will see that it's more natural. You don't see those oversaturated colorations due to the upscale models. By just using the upscale by models method in here, well, both methods work. They are able to upscale videos as the output result. But it depends if you want more natural upscaling compared with this to generate videos from the first group. This is in 720p resolution. Then when you use the 5 billion parameter model to do another latent upscale, it will become like this. The upscaling. This does not affect the color and the sharpness of the character, and all the small objects in this video scene are not affected by the upscaled model. Whereas if you use the upscale model to do upscaling, obviously you can upscale it way higher, way larger size resolutions. But when you see that in like some frames, when the character like this, the eyes, this is some artifacts coming up from the upscale models. And those hairs are over sharpened, or we call it like oversaturated color, some artifacts that are coming from the upscale model. So, well, both methods work and are able to upscale, but it depends. Some people like a more natural way of looking, and some people like to have more artifacts and more AI feel. And you can use that kind of upscaling, because when you use upscalers like 4x Ultra Sharp, those kinds of upscale models are going to over sharpen, or it just puts too much artifact into your output results. Sometimes it is not very ideal for upscaling in some scenarios for some video scenes. Well, it was good for using like 4x Ultra Sharp to do image generation upscale, and like some upscale models like the Foolhardy, it is well nice to have for some anime styles of videos or cartoon style videos or pretty good on those results. But sometimes for video motions, it will create some artifacts or over sharpen some objects in some scenes. So I feel that is not quite preferable for using for video upscale, especially for transformer diffusions generated AI videos, where you see right now, we are getting like better, smoother motions for our generated video. We want to get the colorations and all the objects in a more natural way, even if the resolution is changing. I prefer when we upscale, we keep that less artifacts and get this as natural as possible for the color as we can. And later on the next steps, if you like the AI videos, and then you can bring it to some special upscale software like Topaz, whatever software that you're using for upscaling more professionally, and the result is going to be more better by using that. Let's try another video that I'm going to do in this one. So in next examples, I am going to try out with you guys with this image. Similar styles of images. I use image file path here. You guys can use the image load image node in here whichever preference that you want to use. And I am going to enable both upscaling methods, and in this case for the speed of the generation times on, I am still remaining with the light X2 VCFG LoRa, and this is going to set even lower sampling step. This time I'm going to use like eight sampling steps to try that out. And you can see that in this calculation here, it will change this number to four. So when I just click the run button, you can see that is changing to four and I have to correct this folder path and try that again. And yes, I got this right. This image originally was 2,600 width and 1,500 height. And we have to resize this to 720p resolution for the WAN 2.2. And you will see that it is going to be rendered faster a lot compared with the first day that we used the WAN 2.2 in the last tutorial that I talked about without LoRa for the CFG or the Fusion X LoRa and without the low sampling steps. It is way, way longer times to generate. And even you will see that using the set 720p is more obvious having longer generation times without the distillation LoRa. So by using this, I am going to show the timing as well in this generation. All right? We have the generate result. And first, let's check out the timing. We are using one minute for the 5B latent upscale groups in this one, and it was generating 129 frames. And let's go to the command prompts window where you will see more information in here. So the first run sampling in here, this is the high noise and low noise, obviously is shortening the time a lot compared with our the first day of using the WAN 2.2 without any LoRa applying. And just by default, that template workflow using for WAN 2.2, with the help of the distillation LoRa, we can bring down way faster and bring down the sampling steps and generate way faster. Right now, in my machines, 
it is generating like 1 minute, 48, 46 seconds in this range for the 129 frames. And this is, I'm talking about, it is 720p resolution. This is not the 480p resolution. Let's go to see the normal upscaling using the upscale by models in here. As you can see, it is processing 129 frames from the 720p resolution to 2400 width. Well, that will be assumed like about 2K resolution for that. And this was spending six minutes in this generation time for just a simple model by upscale by model in here. Whereas if we go down to here, as you can see, the last step, it is the processing for the 5 billion parameter model. Again, it's using one minute to generate those 129 frames in this scenario. And for the result, rise to see that now, this is the first generated video in the 720p resolution. Obviously in WAN 2.2, way better. Lots of stuff is improved compared with the WAN 2.1. Now going to the upscale video that we have for these two methods. The left one in here that I'm highlighting is the 5B WAN 2.2 models doing the latent upscale. The right side in here, this is the normal upscale by model method that I applied. And you see that first of all, the hair is obviously way better with, for me, I am more preferring more natural looking for the color and those shapes and sharpness. When you're looking at here using by model upscale, some of the hair and the skins are creating some artifacts. And basically, you see even in YouTube, some other videos when people use some upscalers, they are creating artifacts. With this method, you can clearly tell that they are using the upscale models simply doing upscale frame by frame. If you use the 5B models, it is based on the latent upscale and just generated the video into a larger resolution. That way, it is looking more natural in this way to compare with what you have with this kind of hair. So well, it is really personal preference. If you want to have more artifacts and a way sharper hair and skin, then you are going to use the model by upscale. And if you prefer more like this natural way of hair and even this natural coloration, this doesn't mean this is a bad resolution. This is a large resolution from an AI video model. So it doesn't really bring down the quality by just doing the latent upscale. And the latent upscale is a really simple method. It doesn't require you to use any additional custom nodes or any additional upscale models to do that. And right now, because we have the Fusion X and as well as the Light XTV Distilled LoRa now in here, the 5B, I am using the Fusion X as the showcase of what you want to use for the WAN 2.2. And you see that it is no problem at all. I can mix with different LoRa models in here. Like for example, in my case, the first group in here generating the image to video is using the Light X 2V. The latent by upscale groups, I am using the Fusion X. It doesn't matter at all. It does not affect or make your AI videos deformed or have inconsistent characters or whatever that effect is. It's still able to generate the same video but in a larger resolution, and you are getting more details of every object in the video as well, because this is working by literally in the latent data in here. And therefore, I think this is a well pretty good way to use the 5B models. As I have mentioned, the WAN 2.25B has its potential. Rather than just use that for generating image to video or text to video, it can be used for like this case as a tool for upscaling your video. Or maybe later, there is something new that we can play around with. This is just the beginning of the WAN 2.2. And check it out if this method is useful or inspires you guys to use something that you can think of. And I will see you guys in the next video.